Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, October 13th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, busted. CNN fabricates another news report, this time using one of Jeb Bush's staff members to play the role of an antagonist to frame Donald Trump. I don't think that you're a friend to woman. Within minutes of this scripted performance, CNN producers put together a hit piece and ran with the story. Donald Trump is always using the C word about women. I cherish women. Did mom ever stare at you like this, Donald? Yet another example of the long list of BS stories brought to you by CNN. Boy, did I almost look stupid. (laughs) Plus, live coverage of the liberal authoritarian Democrat debate as we take a look at the face-off between the criminal Hillary Clinton and the socialist Bernie Sanders. Live coverage begins right now on the InfoWars Nightly News. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome to our special live edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. David Knight and Joe Biggs will be joining me in the studio at 7.30 Central. We're going to be giving you our take on the Democratic debate. It's uh, being touted as the uh, greatest show on earth. If you've got a, a 3D headset, you can actually catch a glimpse of what the candidates are doing when the camera is not on them. Now, I don't think that you're going to be able to kind of swing around the candidates and see the the strings being pulled there by the puppet masters, but it should be pretty interesting. Be sure to tweet us your questions using hashtag Dem debate, and we'll go ahead and read those live on the air. The debate ends about 930 central, so we'll give you about a five minute wrap up after that. And we know that you all really enjoy the commentary here, the mystery science theater info wars style. Now, it'll be very interesting to see If CNN has yet another plant in the audience, uh, they're just seething there, foaming at the mouth to spin the narrative on a plant that was in attendance at the No Labels event. Uh, They sort of touted it as this just regular female audience member who had some pretty pressing questions there for Donald Trump. Let's take a look at their spin on what happened that day. I do cherish. I cherish women. And just when Trump thought it was safe to go on to the next question... If you become president, will a woman make the same as a man? And do I get to choose what I do with my body? You're going to make the same if you do as good a job, and I happen to be pro-life. As for what his questioner did with her body, hands on hips, eyebrow cocked. So there she was, just your average angry female audience member, no makeup, the cross-armed. You could see her body language. Well, it turns out she wasn't just your average female in attendance there who was upset with Trump's take on things. Uh, She's a paid political operative of the GOP and a paid staff member of Team Jeb Bush. Now, this was an article up on the Drudge Report out of the conservative treehouse, so good job, guys. Uh, Now, they kind of put this whole piece together, looked at her her entire social media accounts, which are are being scrubbed as we speak. She's trying to erase all evidence of this. Uh, But this, she is a current staffer for Senator Kelly Ayate, and she's also working in New Hampshire on behalf of the Jeb Bush 2016 campaign. Now, uh, it's interesting because she asked Trump about, you know, if I'm, will I be able to do what I want with my body, Donald Trump? Well, the the woman that she's working for is also pro-life. So I'm, you know, I'm 
probably generalizing here, but I imagine this girl is also pro-life, but that doesn't matter to her. She's willing to play the thespian, play the role, play her part, take down the whole party, make the GOP look like old, angry white men that don't care about women just to play that opposition there and take down, eliminate any political opposition. Now, of course, Donald Trump quickly responded to all of this and he said, how can Jeb Bush expect to deal with China, Russia and Iran if he gets caught doing a plant during my speech yesterday in New Hampshire? So <laughs> that's, you know, a very interesting take on things. I don't think that they expected that uh, people were gonna find out that this girl was actually a paid GOP staffer there working with Jeb Bush. Of course, they came out and said, she did it on her own accord. It was not authorized. Uh, but this is the kind of thing that we're going to be seeing out of CNN. They'll they'll work with the GOP as long as it's going to help them take down, uh, you know, a, a common enemy there. And let's not forget one of the debate moderators there, Anderson CIA Cooper, was a member of the Clinton Global Initiative. Uh, he's an esteemed, or they call him a notable past member there on the Clinton Global Initiative's website. So I'm sure he's going to be really tough on Hillary Clinton there tonight with the questions. Of course, she's going to get a lot of softballs thrown her way. It'll be very interesting to see who actually asks her about her flip-flop on the TPP or who asks her about Benghazi or her email scandal or what have you. It'll probably be another person there on the panel. Um, but no wonder that trust in the media, trust in the government is at an all time low. We can blatantly see that they're setting this up to be a great spectacle and then they're not even gonna ask any really tough questions. Here's another article, something else CNN just recently did when they were covering the Oregon shooting. This is a video someone sent us in. Sandy Hook footage spliced into Oregon shooting news. Does the corporate media take us for idiots? So now I work in media. I know sometimes we are running low on B-roll, but you, you're not running so low on B-roll of a school shooting that you have to go back and use footage from Sandy Hook. So, I mean, that right there is, it's not laziness. I can't say it's late laziness. That is blatant propaganda there. Uh, for anyone who's not really paying attention, they would just see that same scene over and over again. They could have found some other B-roll. Uh, unfortunately, there have been plenty of other opportunities for them. So, you know, they obviously do think that we're idiots. And this is why trust in the media, trust in our government is at an all time low. And Obama says, you know what, this suspicion of the government is paralyzing, especially when they're trying to do big things. And of course, by that, what he means is that it's paralyzing to his agenda. He said, if you think the government is the enemy, and that too is a running strain in our democracy, that's sort of in our DNA. We're suspicious of government as a tool of oppression. And that skepticism is healthy, but it can be paralyzing when we're trying to do big things together. Ah, uh, well, we're not really trying to do big things together with you, Obama, especially when it comes to your very confusing agenda there in the Middle East. So here's a question a lot of people are asking, is Obama actually trying to start World War III like we've said, he is poking the bear there with Russia. Now, Russian airstrikes have been seen globally. They've hit a number of areas there uh, attacking ISIS. And so that is leading people to wonder, well, how are there so many areas that they're attacking? I thought the U.S. has been fighting ISIS for over a year now. How did they miss all of these different areas? Well, now it's being reported that the U.S. has provided 50 tons of ammunition now to some moderate rebels there. They've airdropped them in uh, to some areas. And they're also providing weapons to a new group, the Democratic Forces of Syria. This, uh, this group includes the Kurdish YPJ militia, uh, which has been accused of engaging in war crimes. So we're actively dropping weapons into the hands of the very people the Russians are trying to bomb into oblivion. And then, of course, blaming the Russians for that. Joe Biden has come out and said in the past that there's no such thing as moderate rebels there in Syria. We've reported how they actively defect to ISIS once they get the weapons and the training. So the stage is being set for World War III, but most Americans are so distracted they see the video right there on the news and they say, wow, I wonder how ISIS is getting all of those Toyota trucks. Well, here's the answer. Alex Jones here for Infowars.com to break down and reveal the mystery behind why ISIS 
has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, perhaps more than a thousand, late model, armored, militarized Toyota trucks, mainly from the United States. Now, we reported on this in 2014. I'm going to show you some of the articles. The mystery is solved, and it's been solved since the beginning, but it's hiding in plain view. And if folks can understand this simplistic report that's factually based, you can understand everything. The globalists hide everything in plain view like we're idiots. Al Nusra, for four plus years, has been funded by NATO, the United States, Turkey, and many others. It is Al Qaeda in Syria. That's in Reuters, that's in Associated Press. They admit that's who the Russians are now targeting. That is Al Qaeda. ISIS is another Wahhabist spinoff of that, creating Islamic State in an area between Syria and Iraq. So that's a separate new part of the caliphate. The takeover of Syria and the area around Damascus that's going to be left to Syria is being done by Al-Qaeda al-Nusra. The U.S., quote, gives the armored vehicles, the missiles, the weapons that Saudi Arabia gives them and others give them to al-Nusra, who are the good rebels, al-Qaeda, and then they give them to ISIS. And that's even come out in Congress. But the mainstream media just keeps acting like this isn't a fact. The head of defense intelligence went public a couple of months ago. We played the clip here. Um, they've had the deputy head of the CIA go public because they're all covering their butts. They're either covering their butts or they're signaling to everyone that treason has been committed and something needs to be done. Our military, remember three years ago, said we're not going to be the Air Force for Al Qaeda in Syria. So they changed the name to ISIS to confuse the public. So last week, the Treasury Department comes out and says, we want to know where the tr trucks came from because they're involved in import-export controls uh, through the Commerce Department. And so they say, we want to know at the Commerce Department and at the Treasury where the Toyotas came from. Well, we know a bunch of them came from Texas. I'm going to show you the articles. It's been in NPR a year ago. Even NPR got it right. It's been in The Spectator. Uh, it's been in InfoWars. It's been known. It's been known for a long, long time, just buried in the articles. And then they say, where did the they get them? Are they covering their butts or are they trying to signal that the public should investigate this? I think it's a little bit of both, but here are some of the articles. Here's an article at Washington's blog up on Infowars.com today that breaks it all down uh, and has the uh, link to the spectator. And it also uh, has uh, the link uh, to the public radio. And you can go to public radio, PRI International, part of public radio, and you can read the article right here. Uh, this one Toyota pickup truck is at the top of the shopping list of the Free Syrian Army and the Taliban, 2014. And then you go into the article, it admits down here in the story that it's come from the United States, given to al Nusra, uh, and that the State Department, that's Hillary Clinton, gave the non-lethal aid to the Syrian rebels al Nusra. Okay, boom. Now let's continue. ISIS drives Texas-made Toyota trucks apparently modified for U.S. Special Forces. And then it gets into how these were made in Texas. And it links to all the admissions from the U.S. Army orders, and it's total proof. Infowars.com. Here's another one. Where did ISIS get all those Toyotas? This is last week, seven days ago, October 7th. Uh, Christian Science Monitor. U.S. official asked how ISIS got so many Toyota trucks, ABC News, seven days ago. So there's that report. Uh, then, of course, ISIS got a bunch of, quote, weapons from Iraq accidentally that the U.S. military left for them. They've got pre-crime systems watching our troops to, before they commit a crime with computers. Beyond 1984, Minority Report. But the people running the Pentagon and running the White House are arming al-Qaeda, and that's okay. And it's hidden in plain view. Where's the current crime monitoring on this? Uh, let's continue here. I mean, if I try to bring fruit into the country, I'll get arrested or out of the country. But you can just give stinger missiles to Al-Qaeda and, and, and trucks and nobody gets in trouble. Uh, here's another one. Four-wheel uh, drives to ISIS or what longbows were to the English at you know, their big battle. And then it goes on, the, the Welsh longbow.